Hi everyone, welcome to Blue Lotus Gardens. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Blue Phoenix. I make fun planting videos from my found knowledge and then share with you a fun plant vlog of what I do behind the scenes of my home-based plant shop, Blue Lotus Gardens. Um, if that's something that you're interested in and you like, I recommend subscribing and helping us grow, liking the video, and then commenting down below, uh, giving me a, a nice little comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Today's Plant Care Tuesday video, I am going to um, talk to you all about my plant care routine and how I take care of the plants for the store and then also for my own plants and we just it's just going to be a very relaxing uh, plant care video so um, just enjoy it, uh, grab some coffee and just relax and observe what I do as a plant parent, um, I this is all from my found knowledge. So this is like what I've gained, and then just like observed, and so I think observing others' uh, plant care routines are great because it also helps us grow. Um, if also if you want to help me grow, I have my merch in the link down below. Um, I have new designs, and I I make all these designs myself. And it helps me support my channel and helps me support my passion in everything that I do. I run the blog, I, I run my plant shop, I run the YouTube channel and everything. So it's, it's just all really a great support to add on and help me do this um, passion that I just really enjoy sharing with you all. And I hope you all enjoy it as well. This video is going to be a little bit vlog style. so. Just so you, just for a heads up, I hope you all enjoy it. Um, I've been really just relaxing and enjoying all the new plants that I've received and also the new plants for the store and all the amazing people that have like just, I've met and have come by and just supported in every, in every single kind of way. Y'all are all awesome. Thank you. Okay, on to the video. All right, welcome everybody. So first thing I do when I walk, walk into my plant studio as you see here is I turn on the lights I uh, for my grow tent my awesome new grow tent that I have I have this nice little uh, clicker so I have it everything set up to it so where I just automatically turn it on and everything will turn on from there um, I keep the fan running and then I use my phone to turn on my my lights in my room so be right back so i i just set them to like have be automatic so now I'll, I'll, um, they'll turn on at like at a certain time and then they'll turn off at a certain time um but this is the color uh that they receive in here for that time being uh, uh, for like two hours this is my little table that I have um, things that I bottom water overnight things for the store that I, that are y'all seeing free little cuttings that I do whenever people come by for the store uh, things that I need a pot and stuff like that here are the orchids that I've been uh, reviving everybody so if you see my vlog you'll see how i've been caring for those that's my little area where i talk to y'all here is my section and make sure that my humidifier if it's um if one of them or here's my humidifier so i make so these are the ones that i use right now when i need to have like extra humidity um i make sure to take off the equipment from the room but um, it'll raise up the humidity up to like 90% and I'll keep it there for like an hour and then I just open the room and clear it out so but right now they, it's it's not they don't really need it right now and it's just like a once a week or maybe once a month kind of situation I'm trying to do at the moment This is actually cinnamon, so that way whenever I was um, 
cutting the KP off the orchid, it um, didn't get any fungus. So now I just gotta throw it away. So I'm currently thinking if I should repot my elephant ear over here. The roots look like they're about to come out, so it might, I might do it, but like, it's about to be fall. So this is what I recommend you use to amend your soil when you're repotting and going and um, upcutting your alloca your alocasias and your um, elephant ears. Um, they're going to, if you're going to move it inside and all that stuff, this helps uh, retain the moisture and water so that way you don't have to like water less. I like to take, be very easy going with my plant care so this is what I use. You just need to add two cups and that's about it. So I finished potting up the elephant ear and I just want to show y'all. Oh my god, I look crazy. I just woke up from a nap. Okay, so let's talk about biochar. Biochar has really helped me out for uh, my watering issue. I have a watering issue. My name is Blue and I have a watering issue. <laughs> so um, I don't like to water. That's my issue. So the biochar has helped me with um, getting in, getting like on a schedule with watering, my own schedule, my own personal schedule. And then this way, like it retains as much moisture and water into it. So that way, um, you know, that I don't feel as bad for not watering as much. And then um, I, it's easier for me to notice when it is time for it to water because it doesn't really get even really heavy. It gets really, it's just really light, so so y'all know. Okay, so for this part of the video, we're going to be talking about my fertilizing routine and what I use for my fertilizing routine. And so this is what I use is the Tres uh, 20 sauce. Uh, this is what I carry for my uh, plant shop. And it's a 2020 blend. So what, what does 2020 mean, right? And you'll see all these kind of numbers and uh, on on fertilizers and so as someone that's pretty much like relatively new into the plant hair community um, this at first was very like troubling because I wasn't sure what that meant but then as I did research you know certain plants um, would require certain type of nutrient <laughs> Uh, so a certain type of nutrient in order for the uh, for a certain type of result that you are looking for or that your just overall general care for that uh, plant there's on the on the side note there's been some studies of certain types of uh, nutrients for a certain type of plants to share to show uh, different types of results of the grower, growers choice so that's been something that's, that's just been tossed out there and that's why a lot of people go for this type of number uh, fertilizer with this versus this other type of fertilizer. Uh, but for overall general purpose, a 20-20-20 is a general um, fertilizer um, and you can find that blend amongst a lot of uh, fertilizers. And what that means is that it is a uh, it is balanced formula of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium so this is how i remember the way the nutrients benefit the plant nitrogen supports the foliage stem growth the phosphorus supports a healthy root system and potassium mainly supports its overall plant cellular functions so what's really good about this one it um, is great and why i stock it for my plant um, shop is because um, it's just, it's a very balanced um, fertilizer. And then also it has great directions on it. So it just, it tells you like, if you're, if, if this is like you're new into fertilizing, it'll tell you like to not fertilize more than two weeks between uh, March and September. So that way you know um, how to fertilize your plant. And then it even tells you in the back um, for your for like the winter times plants um, experience a short period of time so um, do not fertilize it um, it even tells you directions on how to mix your fertilizer 
So you would want to mix one tablespoon of the fertilizer with one t uh, liter of water. Uh, and I'll, sh I'll sh actually uh, share this experience with you all. For my fertilizing routine, this is what I'm going to have to do. I want to share with you all that. And then I'm also going to share with you all a couple little repottings that I've been <laughs> needing to do for the store. So hope you all enjoy the video. So I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of the fertilizer into my watering can. This is my watering can that I found in a thrift store that I thought was really cool. And if you're unsure, um, remember this uh, for your fertilizer, uh, less is more. So if you're thinking about pouring a little bit more, don't. Um, I just know um, how much to pour for my watering can. My watering can full. And then, so what you also want to have um, around at all times is a microfiber towel. A microfiber towel helps you wipe off um, extra water that might get on your foliage. And then also, um, if you're bottom watering, like I do, because uh, that's what I do and that's what helps me out, um, you would want to use it to uh, wipe around the excess of the water that is found uh, um, when you pull out the the plants here from the water. So I hope these little tips are helpful. This is just my little plant care routine and I just really wanted to share it with you all and I hope you all enjoy it. Okay, so because, I'm a, because this is how I water them, This is my little curtsy eye. Um, a couple of y'all have bought a couple of the propagation from this one, so. If you didn't know, you can also bottom water terracotta. This terracotta is porous. Um, and then just keep it all moist. So this is a, this, I think this is the second for my own fertilizing schedule. This is either like the second or the second to last. Uh, time that I am going to fertilize my uh, begonia griffin over here. I made a propagation of it to introduce it to the store because I wanted to see how people would like begonias. So, and this one's an easy one. It's growing a little one out of there. My tip when you're when you're watering begonias is to get um, a a watering can when it, with an el elongated spout. So that way, um, it doesn't damage the foliage. As we all know, begonias have fancy foliage, and it gets a little, and, it, and it'll rot away if uh, it gets a lot of moisture caught up onto it. So I'll just like lightly like water the top of it and let that soak in. And as you see here, I just am letting it all um, get watered in this container, so that way. Um, because not, not everything needs to be fertilized. Every, uh, like my alocasias, uh, you don't want to fertilize those. Um, it'll, I think it'll just throw them off. I, they'll, like, it either puts, it just, they'll just put off a lot of new growth and then they'll just end up going dor dormant um, really sooner. So that's just from what I've, that's just like from what I've noticed. Um, it could be different for everybody else, um, but that's for me. Next, I am going to water these uh, Monstera Sotificanas, like fast growing, and uh, these are for actually my Patreon members. And I'll have like maybe one or two available uh, for my store, and then I'll set one off for like a trade, but like a nice good trade. So I'll just like water right here, here as well. This is my Philodendron Mykins. I need to actually fertilize this one. Personally, from my experience, I think um, I, I philodendrons are uh, okay to fertilize I, by this time. And then finally, um, this Raphidophora decursiva 
as you see here it's growing a lot it has like a new new growth right there I really enjoy this one and it also its common name is dragon's tail can you see why ain't that adorable <laughs> I just I really also like the the thickness of the the, the, the leaf and then also the ribbing on it it makes it look interesting it also kind of looks like it's like fanned out <laughs> it's my interpretation of it this is one of my favorites also and we will have it from time to time and so i hope you all enjoy this one as much as i have and so when you're fertilizing i just uh you want to like make sure the part of the plant well the soil is is uh covered uh and is moist so that way it's like an even watering throughout the whole plant so what they oh, what these are going to do also they're just going to be bottom watered for the for the for at night and um, they'll just absorb the rest of the they'll just absorb like the rest of the water and uh, in the morning um, i'll just check them out and see how they're doing all right next is my little repotting i hope y'all enjoy i hope y'all enjoy my little video <laughs> gloves on I hope the audio did not change on me because sometimes I have issues when I change up in the room that the audio will just like switch up and stuff but um so yeah can y'all see my awesome hoodie uh the one the only the great <laughs> I love Bob Marley so cool, like so chill. Alright, so first I have to share with y'all this really cute little begonia that I've been rescuing for a while. As you see, it's not gonna uh, grow as much uh, because it's in peat moss, and so um, it's doing this repotting is necessary because during the winter months it's not gonna benefit a lot, and it's probably going to just like die off because it doesn't have any nutrients and it's just absorbing from the peat moss that's from my observations i could be wrong but i don't know i started off with re with rex begonias and like i mean they're all just doing really well now <laughs> but again just my observation So I'm just going to place this in here, like so, and then um, place soil in the inner portion of this container and fill up the re remainder um, area with soil, as you see here. So when you're repotting your Rex begonia, you want to make sure that you're not like covering the rhizome with soil. Um, that's a good way to ensure the plant to die. The way it works, the rhizome will um, uh, branch out new growth from it, so that way the begonia will have new foliage from there. And like I have recommended in the past. Uh, to bottom water it after you repot it so that way you ensure that it actually gets a full thorough uh, watering and do not fertilize it. Um, it it would just cause it to to go wild share this with y'all and as you see right there in that little part it has that new growth so and the rhizome is pretty uh, clean and if you need to you can always use um, a fluffy brush to rub off the 
rhizome. Make sure your fluffy brush is uh, clean before using it. Trust me, it might look a little puny at the moment, but it's really happy. <laughs> Next, I have some really fun ones for the store. Um, this Hoya Chelsea has new growth in it. It has a, like a little like hand going on it. a little awkward hand motion that I have to do to hold it. So this is my Hoya Chelsea, um, and then I just, as you see here, that's how I pot, I repotted it. And then I'll just let this one grow into its container, and then when it's ready to be grow, whenever whenever it's ready to be sold, I'll just sell it um, for for when it's like actually like grown into. Um, the container itself. Next, I have to um, go repot this uh, begonia griffin. As you see here, this one's from my store. I repotted it. If you if you all um, came to the event, you all were like really intrigued by it. And we're just wondering. I even like kept it out in its cloche, so that and I spoke to y'all about the cloche and how to keep it in uh, in the cloche. And you know, it's really it, it's really cool to just speak to people about that. So we'll just repot this one. We'll repot this two inch container into a four inch container, and I'll add a little support for this. Then I'm also going to amend it with a little bit of perlite for the store. So so this is how I keep my my plant for for myself and also for my store and. You know, want to make sure that they're great and good. You have a good, uh, you have a good start in growing up a begonia yourself. Next, this next we have to get that little support, a little skewer here. So stick them in there. And if you ever have to repot a begonia, uh, a cane begonia specifically, you just want to grab it from the inner part of it, like so. pops out if you squeeze around it. I'm gonna quickly show you all those roots. Like how cool is that? What's really cool is like I grew this like myself and it's just it's it's my little baby to y'all. Holy cow. That looks good. So I'm going to take this support out for right now. Place a little bit of it in here. Make sure I take out these bark pieces. So I also, uh, a little tip, when you're repotting some uh, organic pieces like uh, bark, um, if you want to make sure to take those off from the top soil layer, 
it'll cause a little bit of rot to your to the stem of the plant because it retains a lot of moisture. So um, even especially if you're keeping it in a high humidity, just a little tip from me to you. That was like a little bit scary. And then I just placed this little Okay, that was a little bit harder than expected. Um, and here you are. And I'll show y'all what I did in the back right there. I uh, added that little pipe on there because so that way it go it grows upright and then it, um, it doesn't trail down. Uh, but inside of it, you'll see here there's like new growth. It's doing really well. I'm just really excited to whoever gets this nice, uh, nice little begonia over here. I'm, I'm thinking about get. I'm thinking about making more. So, comment down below if you think I should be making more, because you never know. I could bar actually have some started. Here's a little bonus to show you how I uh, repot a little. Uh, vermiculi begonia propagation. And it's right there. As you see, that's the little uh, begonia that I'm going to propagate. I have my begonias in here. That's how I start them off. And then I uh, get them going. If you'd like me to make a video of this, let me know in the comments down below. So a little bit of soil.
So I push inwards like this on the container so that way I'm not messing with the roots and it kind of forms its own little system to pop out. And then I just kind of grab, I just grab it. There's like the remaining foliage, so we just put that to the side. And there's my little baby. <laughs> my little baby. Sweet. Then we just pop them in here. That little green speck is the begonia. <laughs> and that's the begonia taco knife. And I'll just paste, place it in my um, little grow tent now and it'll grow. As always, thank you all so much for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed watching my plant care routine. Um, and I hope that helps you out with your plant care routine with all the tips that I shared with you all. Um, they're not secrets, they're just my little tips and that's from my found knowledge that I like to share with you all. There's been a larger amount of people that are um, now into houseplants and I think it's great that we all share our experience, our knowledge, our plants and everything else with, uh, with, with us all uh, and creating just a really cool community with, amongst each other. Um, you all are so amazing for supporting my channel and helping me grow and then also my plant shop as well um, my plants are just I just I love that everybody's super in, enjoying them all and super supportive of, of me and my passion and helping me grow can't wait to share with you all some more um, till next time bye everyone